Well, good morning, David. Welcome to the studio. Great to be here. Oh, uh, you know, David, I, I looked at your bio and it is so long and impressive. I didn't think I could do it justice by reading it. Could you just tell us a little bit about your story? Sure, of course. So I spent 20 years in the federal government and within federal government, I basically started as an intern and worked through my way up to become the deputy CIO, the CISO and the CIO. Um, for the past 15 years, uh, that those are the roles that I was in. And I worked in the financial regulator for mortgage and banking, as well as uh, transportation, critical infrastructure. Um, and very lastly, I worked for the Department of Housing and Urban Development as a CIO. Um, so after I exited last year, I actually went on to, a, to work for a, um, a financial technology company, which is publicly traded. Uh, I was a global SVP. So I do have experience from both the public sector side as well as the private sector side. Right. Well, and it, it just tweaked my interest when you said, you know, as a CIO of the White House and some of these big U.S. federal agencies, what did you think about what I said in terms of, you know, IT decision makers thinking that leadership doesn't understand cyber risk? That's actually near and dear to my heart, especially my experience working at the White House. I was there from 2007 to 2009, and I was the deputy uh, chairperson for a presidential transition from Bush to Obama, as well as the, um, the deputy director for operations. And working within that environment, there is a really high demand. It's a high, it's a, it's a work environment that's high stress. Uh, there is a demand to, to excel, especially supporting the president of the U.S. And there is a lot of focus to make sure that the presidential policy is getting pushed. So there is no, there is no, um, so when, when people are making errors or when, when there is the necessary downtime that's needed, basically a lot of time that it gets bypassed. There's process bypass, there's GRC, government risk and compliance, that's not, that's getting overlooked simply because the organization needs to support the president. So through the, through the entire years, um, you can sense that there is a level of disconnect on cybersecurity and cyber risk, especially the focus on that. So in 2014, long after I left, um, there was a breach, a breach occurred at the White House. And you can, this is actually publicly trade, uh, publicly information. You can Google that information. Um, but the bottom line is that it served as a wake up call to the White House. So what happened was that they actually ousted the CIO, the, the deputy CIO, they start focusing more on making sure that there's necessary monetary investment as well as resource investment, as well as the overall process into the, into the White House technology area, but then also focusing and shift that overall, um, overall team into the, into the control of the White House military. So a lot of the situation that you see here, it's, it's really an event that happened and then people started taking notice. And then once they started taking notice, they started moving forward with the, uh, the action to remediate those, those, uh, those issues. Wow, and those are big complex issues, obviously. Where do you see the CISO or IT security leaders best being able to help in terms of offering visibility and some control? So it, it's, you can see that there is a lot of current events that happened. For example, last year, the Colonial Pipeline um, ransomware, and this year, the cyber attack from from Russia to Ukraine, you're seeing that there's a lot of awareness being built up uh, on cybersecurity, cyber risks. So getting to the point that the current administration as well as SEC, they're actually looking to enforce that the CISO will report directly to the board. Uh, the CISO will actually have the necessary authority to inform the board on what's going on. So I'll give you one example. When I was working at HUD back in 2020, our SOC team was able to stop a, a nation state sponsor attack simply by creating this, this, uh, this dashboard and take the necessary action based on what was going on within our network environment. So what my, the bottom line is that the CISOs need to have the necessary way of communicating to the board. And a lot of the time that those communication comes derived from dashboard or derived from some sort of a concise way of presenting information to foster better communication, as well as making a decisive um, action when something occurred. Right, so they really need to have that understanding of the attack surface and see what kind of risk that's presenting. And I guess, you know, as we talk about digital transformation, 
We know that one of the areas that affects the most is cloud and cloud native application, rapid development, DevOps. And we also have you know, cloud leaders who may not want security to slow them down. So how does an IT security leader get involved with those cloud projects? Yeah, this is, uh, this is something that the CISO needs to work closely with the CIO and vice versa. So when I was working at HUD, we actually modernized a mainframe based, paper based capability, uh, which was built back in 1970s, 1980s. We moved, basically move everything to the cloud. And this, this overall project, uh, it, it's responsible for $1.3 trillion of US wow. mortgage. So you understand the, the, uh, the impact to the econ economy if there's some situation that happened with this capability. So with that said, um, along the way, I work hand in hand with the CISO to make sure that we, he knows exactly what's going on, how the design is, is going to be properly implemented and making sure that we have proper security assessment, proper security control in place, and at the same time, the proper documentation. So to alleviate any potential issues, as well as ways that we can go through continuous monitoring for any cyber threats. So the outcome of it was that we're able to revamp the capability and then really improve the organizational efficiency by saving the overall industry, mortgage industry, 200 million a year. Wow, so I think we all, you know, imagine the, uh, these issues and the risk within the government and, and I love hearing how you're able to help minimize that risk. But the, I think there's a lot of people in the audience who just work for commercial enterprises or small, medium business. How do you think that experience translates into the private industry? So for that, you have to understand the motivation. To me, I have experience from both public and private side. So I do understand um, the ways that the attackers or the cyber threat is posing um, to any corporations. So if you understand the motivation, usually it's monetary driven or potentially that it's a um, it's extraction of information. Um, and then typically that the cyber threat will pose based on the using common sense, right? The, the, the easiest target, the, the weakest link. So understanding that as well as knowing that in the cybersecurity world, it's a zero sum game. Somebody's gonna win, somebody's gonna lose. And obviously we wanna make sure that it's always us that's on the winning side, we're the, we're the good guys. So by understanding that, the, it, there's, I would say that for any corporations, any government entities, it's the same across the board. It's exactly the same across the board. And the way to mature the, the, um, the overall posture, the cyber hygiene, is actually focusing on people, process, and technology. The enhancement of each area actually goes hand in hand. You could have the greatest technology, but if you don't have the necessary people with knowledge, or if you don't have the, the, the process to tie into the, to the technology, you're not gonna be successful. So the bottom line is that we need to look at all three different areas and then be able to move forward together. Wow, so yeah, people process technology always comes into play and those challenges really do sound universal. I think that's the great thing about this event is that people can connect with peers across industries and learn from each other. Uh, I wanna thank you for kickstarting our conversation today and sharing your perspectives. Um, and again, a, a warm welcome to, to Trend Micro. I know you haven't been here long, but you've already met with some customers. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, if there are customers out there who think David could uh, help you with your research and your understanding of your risk environment, you know, feel free to contact your local Trend Micro account executive and get you in touch.